Good evening and welcome to Dr. Melissa Medicine Woman. I am so excited that you have joined me tonight. I am super happy for you to join me. Tonight, we are gonna be talking about inflammation. That's right, inflammation. What is inflammation? Well, we're gonna get into that. So inflammation is really a local response to an, a cellular injury that is marked by capillary dilation, leukocyte infiltration, it can have redness, it can have heat and pain. And this can serve as a mechanism initiating the elimination of noxious, noxious agents and of damaged tissue. So that's directly from Webster's Dictionary, okay? So a local response to cellular energy that is marked by capillary dilation, leukocyte infiltration, redness, heat, and pain, and that serves as a mechanism initiating the elimination of toxic agents and of damaged tissue. So, well, what does that mean? Well, we're going to break that down tonight. We're going to talk about inflammation. We're going to talk about some foods that can be both pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. So can cause inflammation and can take away inflammation. And we're going to talk about some anti-inflammatory agents that you can take to help you as well. So first of all, tonight, let me go ahead and just go over my disclaimer with you. So this show and all the content are for educational purposes only, not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease or psychological disorder. A specific physician patient or pharmacist patient relationship is necessary before any medical therapies are initiated. Please consult your physician, your pharmacist like me or other qualified healthcare provider with questions about your medical conditions and before starting or using any dietary supplement, herbal remedy, exercise or nutrition plans. Okay, so got that out of the way. Well, who am I? Who is Dr. Melissa Medicine Woman? So for those of you who've been watching, you may, you may know who I am. For those who are new, welcome. I'm so excited that you are with us this evening. I do have over 26 years of experience in the healthcare field in both Eastern and Western medicine. I have over 52,000 clinical hours. I have helped thousands and thousands of patients optimize their health, manage their medications. I am considered the root cause doctor because we get to the root of the problem and eliminate those just add on things. I am a deep prescriber. My physician friends call me a deep prescriber because I pull off unnecessary pills that you're taking. I am your consultant concierge pharmacist, and I'm excited to be with you tonight as Dr. Melissa Medicine Woman and being able to share with you all of the great things that we learn about medicine and um, medication supplements. And so tonight, as we talk about inflammation, let's delve in a little bit deeper and let's, let's pick up and what is. So when we talk about inflammation, we talk about it being a cellular injury. So to be inflamed, you are attacked. Okay. So it is a response um, that your immune system, so your immune system, which we've talked about in other episodes. So please check that out. Um, it is a response when you, when your cells are attacked. Okay. And what happens is they start to fight back. Okay. Then there's the redness, there's the heat, there's the dilation of the capillaries. And that's because you know, it's, it's, it's an injury. It's a cellular injury. So the cell level. So when you, when you punch a wall or you punch a boxing bag, and if you haven't done it before, and it's the first time you're doing it, you might have some inflammation or some swelling in your, 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 um, your fist. Okay. And it usually has pain. So if your body, if it, if an area of your body is inflamed, it is usually in pain. Now, some physical symptoms that we can usually see is that heat, that redness, that is because of the capillaries dilation. We are in pain. We feel that pain. We don't always see the pain. So internally, there's a lot of inflammatory processes that can happen and that can make those cells, 
those, um, those injuries to those sales. And what happens is then we have pain, okay, because of the swelling. So the, the stimulation causes the swelling and we see this persistent. Um, it, can, it can happen with somebody who's healthy. It can happen with somebody who's not healthy. Um, it can lead to chronic diseases, okay? If you're inflamed for a very long period. So there's, there's things. So um, inflammatory bowel um, disease. So your bowel has been inflamed. It's irritated. Okay. And it's been irritated for a prolonged period of time. And that prolonged period of time, um, well, we've now have a diagnosis for that. It's inflamed. It's the area of the body that's inflamed. And it now has, um, uh, we call it a syndrome. So inflammatory bowel syndrome. And what happens is you're in pain when, when your bowels are inflamed. Um, other chronic conditions can happen. We're gonna talk about some of those tonight with the, some of the foods that are happening. But what happens is when you have this um, constant, constant inflammatory response in your system, it can, um, it can affect your organs. So it can also affect functions of your, your normal pathways. So your normal day-to-day -day activities can be affected by inflammation. Um, when you have arthritis, your joints are inflamed, okay? Your cells are fighting against each other and it is inflamed and there's anti-inflammatory medications that are out there that help with that. There's anti-inflammatory supplements that help with things like that. Um, and so let's, let's kind of, let's go ahead and delve right in. So inflammation of the body um, can be affected by the foods that you eat. And these foods that you eat can be both good and bad for you. So I talked about pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. So pro-inflammatory means that they can cause inflammation and anti-inflammatory means that it can help reduce the inflammation. So when, you're, when your body is inflamed, we want to not feed it more foods that can cause it to be more inflamed. We actually wanna feed it foods that will cause it to reduce that inflammation if at all possible. Now, when we're, when we're talking about certain foods, sometimes you can overindulge and then those foods become pro-inflammatory instead of an anti-inflammatory effect. Now, when you do consume large amounts, especially of an unhealthy type diet or lifestyle, um, what can happen? It can lead to things like obesity, can lead to things like cardiovascular diseases, stroke, arthritis, um, inflammatory bowel disease. We talked about that. So what do we need to do? Well, we, what we can do is we can help reduce the inflammation, get to the root cause of the issue, figure out what's causing the inflammation to begin with. Okay. So you've got to lessen the inflammation and then we can start peeling back those layers and figure out what is the root cause. Now, a lot of things have to do with our gut health. Okay. And so a lot of things have been focused around gut health and gut inflammation and how making it less, um, your gut less inflammatory. Now, as you're digesting food, there's certain foods um, that, you know, foods rich in calories, as well as foods low in micronutrients can actually lead to that long-term inflammation. It can, um, high calorie high calorie foods can increase your blood glucose levels. It can increase your lipids. If you're, if you're eating the fat content, um, well, what happens then is that free radicals can form and stimulate, um, low grade inflammation. Free radicals are not good. We don't want a lot of free radicals in our system because they are, um, how can I explain? They are things that are not good for you. So they're, they're like little 
spikes that we don't want in there. We don't want free radicals, okay? Now, insulin resistance. So if you're consuming a lot of pro-inflammatory foods, you could actually lead to insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance, we have talked about in the past, which could lead to diabetes. So be sure you check out those other episodes on insulin resistance and diabetes for more information on how not to be going that way. And if you're already that way, how to correct it. Obesity, we talked about. Arthritis, we talked about. Arthrosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. So when your arteries become overly inflamed, they can actually build up plaques and it's called hardening of the arteries. That's a possibility with inflammation, cancer, degenerative diseases, even like Alzheimer's has been linked to inflammation, okay? So here recently it was discovered that the effects of a high calorie diet taken by the mom, so all you women watching, moms during pregnancy can actually predispose a child to chronic diseases because of the result of the inflammation in their adult life. And what happens is this occurs because of altered processes within the muscular tissue and the adipose tissue, which is the fat tissue during the embryonic life. So one realization during this study that, that is, is that the diet in regards to the inflammation can affect that child later on in life. Who would have thought? And yes, things that your mom eats can affect you later on in life. So let's talk about some of the different foods that can be considered um, inflammatory foods, so foods, okay? So some of these are gonna be pro-inflammatory and some of these are gonna be anti-inflammatory. So when we're looking at very high calorie foods, usually those high calorie foods result in oxidative stress. Okay. And oxidative stress can lead to um, high glucose, free fatty acid concentration, causing the release of free radicals, which then can trigger the low grade um, inflammatory response. And that is not good. So high calorie foods, so rich calorie foods um, can cause inflammation, especially in the, in the gut, in the GI tract. So when we're talking about that gut, um, that is one area. Now, um, what happens is that um, very rich or high calorie foods um, can decrease the amount of the bacteria necessary um, for the, the GI tract to be able to break down those foods. And it can cause um, uh, integ the integrity of the gut membrane. So you have a lining in your, in your stomach and it can break down this integrity of that membrane. And that's not good because what happens is it can lead to it being um, penetrated by toxins and which then could promote fatty liver disease. It can promote um, increase in lipids, which has to do with your cholesterol and that free radical formation. And that's, that's just not, not a great thing to happen. So um, we wanna make sure that we are eating the right things that are gonna sustain our body. So food is fuel, okay? And we've talked about in the past, some other episodes about different types of um, food to eat, what is, what is good for you and what is um, less optimal for your system. So remember when you are taking a bite of something, think how it's going to nourish your body or is it not going to nourish your body? Is it just going to um, be there and put on adipose tissue, put on fat tissue? Um, what is it going to do for you? So we've got to look at those foods and we've got to look to make sure that food is not making it worse. We're using food as fuel we use it to sustain and to nourish our body, and then that's it. So let's talk specifically um, about some different, some different food choices, some good and some bad. Now, of course, 
if you're eating a lot of certain things or not so much of certain things that could lead to um, issues with your inflammatory response, okay? So here we go. Foods that can cause, now these are ones that usually cause inflammation. Fructose or sucrose or corn syrup. So fructose is the byproduct of um, the sugar in the natural sugar in your fruits. Okay. So when you're eating fruits and you're thinking, oh, it's good for me. Yes, to an extent, but some of that fructose can actually cause some inflammation. Okay. So sugar is a huge, a huge piece that can cause an inflammatory um, response to happen. Um, and then what happens is it releases those inflammatory um, cytokines, cellular activity happens, it's damaged, and then um, it signals our body to produce when we have more sugar than what is necessary, especially to produce that inflammatory response, which can lead to an overload in especially glucose. Um, and what happens is then the insulin concentrations in our system is off and the amount that's stored in the fat tissue is no longer correct, can lead to obesity. The overload can lead to insulin resistance and even diabetes. So sugar, while it tastes sweet from time to time. So you've got to be careful of how much sucrose or fructose or corn syrup you actually ingest. Now I'm not saying give it up a hundred percent. If that's something that is um, from time to time, you have a sweet tooth on a rare, rare, rare occasions, it's going to be okay to um, have a little bit, but just know what can happen to your body. Listen to your body when you eat certain things. And as you are, after you have that bite of sugar, then pay attention to how you feel. Do you feel worse? Do you feel bloated? Do you feel tired? Those are keys that that might not be fuel for your body. Okay. It may be making things a lot worse. So what else? Trans fats. Okay. So what in the world is trans fats? So trans fats are produced by the process of hydro hydrogeneration that helps to improve the consistency as well as the shelf life of fats. Okay. So processed foods, snacks, frozen foods, fried products, bakery items like donuts and cookies and pastries and crackers. These all have those trans fats in them because it's to help things that you buy packaged usually have trans fats. Some of your bakery items, a lot of your bakery items have it as well because it's to sustain their shelf life. So what do you do? You don't have as much of those trans fats and you learn to read the labels, okay? So you check the labels to see how many grams of trans fats are in there. And you should really be consuming less than one gram per day, okay? Less than one gram per day of the trans fats. Well, there's also saturated fats. So saturated fats are things like cheese, um, meat products, dairy products, uh, pizza. I love pizza. I could have eaten pizza day in and day out. I no longer do that. I went through a phase where I, I could eat pizza all the time. But what I realized is that that was not sustaining me. That was not the right fuel for my body and it was causing some inflammation. So no more pizza all the time. So, or I make healthier choices with my pizza now. So I don't have that saturated fat. Now these fats especially can worsen arthritic inflammation, especially in the joints, okay? So diets higher in saturated fat typically on average have more joint issues or joint arthritis. So when you have arthritis in your joints and it's hard for you to move your joints, um, think about what you're consuming, read those labels and pay attention. 
because we want to make sure that we can get you better. So if we can get down to the root cause of the problem, maybe you can get off of those anti-arthritic medications and you can use your food as fuel for your body and you're not inflaming it with other things. Now, the other saturated fats have also been shown to progress towards colon cancer. So you've got to make sure that you are paying attention, you know, get your, um, do your due diligence and have your, um, your colon checked appropriately, especially if you have a family history, then you want to make sure that you are eating less saturated fats and you're paying attention and listening to your body. So after you eat certain things, pay attention, take time to digest your food, take time to eat and enjoy your food. We eat on the run so often. So take time to enjoy your meal and then sit and see how you feel after whatever it is you ate. And if you're not feeling so good after the fact, then try something different the next time around. We don't want you eating things that are not good, not making you feel better. So when you feel worse after eating a certain product, try something different. Try and avoid it for a while. I noticed that um, the other day I, I incorporated something new and it just didn't sit well with me. And I was like, hmm. And I, I haven't gone back to eating that because it was something that I had eaten in the past and I had reintroduced it and it just didn't make me feel good. I felt tired. Uh, I didn't want to do anything. And so I've decided that that was not the, that is not a food to fuel me. Now let's talk about the omegas. So omega six in particularly is a fatty acid. Um, it's, it's consistent. So you need some omega six. Okay, you also need omega-3. So they are necessary. They work together for growth and development of certain cells in your body. They have um, properties of both being pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. So omega-6 tends to be a little bit more pro inflammatory and omega-3 tends to be more anti-inflammatory. Now that's not always the case, but that tends to be what it seems to be like and what the studies are shown. Um, so you wanna make sure, you know, do you need to do a blood test to see if you are low in a certain omega, okay? Today they make omega-3, they make omega-6, they make omega-9, they make omega-369. Um, they make a combination of different things. These omegas are also found in fish and some other oils. Now, we wanna make sure that you're having a, a balanced diet of your omegas, but you wanna make sure that you don't have too much and not too little. So if we need to do some blood tests, let's do that. And also see how you feel after the fact. Then let's talk a little bit about refined carbohydrates. What is refined carbohydrates? Refined carbohydrates really breaks down to the sugar and flour in our foods. So baked items, bread, white rice, cereals, um, they have some similar properties to the sugar, to the sugars we talked about earlier, um, and that they can elevate your blood glucose. They can cause a systemic inflammatory response. This especially, has been shown to um, have that inflammatory um, bowel disease. Um, so it's, it's not helpful for you when you are just prolonging and making things work, especially, you know, you, you eat food and it goes in and it, your body uses it for fuel it uses it to keep you sustaining, to give you energy. And then of course, what we don't need passes out. And when we have an inflamed bowel system, it makes it hard to pass through and those, some of those um, to pass your food through. And it's very painful, okay? 
So it's very painful for, for these um, individuals who have this. So if you can make it healthier for your gut, make it healthier for your bowels um, versus stimulating that inflammatory response, especially in your gut area, um, because those all play a role together, you know, the, the gut and then the elimination. So refined carbohydrates, pro-inflammatory. Um, now, alcohol. Now, especially excessive alcohol can induce the inflammatory response. So inflammatory markers. So we have markers now that we can test for. We can test um, C-reactive protein. Now there's different ones that you can test. And it shows inflammatory markers. So you can there you can test specifically for certain areas of inflammation. You can check um, areas of your heart, your muscles, things like that. When we're looking for um, a CRP, and we're looking for that inflammatory response, but alcohol can increase and raise your CRP level and make it. Um, more inflammatory to your system, which could actually lead to um, fatty liver with a lot of excess alcohol. It can lead to leaky gut. Well, leaky gut. So leaky gut is where your, um, your gut is leaking toxins out into your body. Okay. So what happens is it causes the, um, especially, so the leaky gut it's, it's further down in your GI tract. So the, the colon is leaking out toxins into the west of your body and increase in your inflammation. Well, that's not good. So alcohol in moderation, there are proven benefits of alcohol. And we'll talk about that one night, just not tonight. So excessive, not so great because it can increase that inflammation. Now, gluten. You've probably heard gluten sensitivity, gluten allergies. So gluten is a product that is found in wheat, rye, barley, and, and cassian. Well, what is that? Well, that is an agent that helps to enhance the flavor of some of those foods. Um, now, people who have a gluten sensitivity, who have been diagnosed with celiac disease, um, what happens is that they're not able to digest that gluten, okay? And because they're not able to digest that gluten, it leads to inflammation of their organs, inflammation of their soft tissues. And so sometimes you might notice that you feel better if you go gluten-free, especially if you've been diagnosed with celiac disease, you need to be gluten-free because your body does not digest the food. Now, gluten can be hard on you, and so that's why sometimes it's better if it is causing you an, 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 uh, a pro-inflammatory response that you um, don't take that gluten, okay? So something to, to watch out for. There's a lot of products today that are now gluten-free. You'll see a lot of things available. Um, now, they may have some of those um, if you're getting packaged things, you got to watch for your other things like your saturated fats and your trans fats. But they make gluten free flour. So you can do your own baking and it's actually healthier than some of the other. So you've, you've got to do what is right for your body. So you've got to look at all of these aspects. You know, I've given you a lot of these different foods. We've talked about the flour and the sugar that can be um, pro-inflammatory, and you've got to make the best choice for you that's going to fuel your body. Now, um, okay, so let's talk about MSG, monosodamine glucamate. Okay, well, what is that? Well, monosodamine gluconate or MSG is a flavor enhancing agent that's usually added to fast foods soups, sauces. Um, and it's a particular, it's a sodium. So it's a salt and it has been associated with, um, causing chronic inflammatory pathways to happen. Okay. Especially in the liver. And so MSG is one of these things that 
you know, we, we see no MSG, no MSG. So it's that product that we want to try and stay away from because it can cause that inflammatory response and make it harder for you to digest foods, harder to um, handle things. So food is fuel. Pay attention to what you're eating and how you're feeling. How does it fuel you? If you put sugar in your gas tank, your car is not going to go very far. It's going to corrode the engine. So when you're putting food in your body, you've got to make sure that you're putting the right fuel in your body to make it go. Okay. Now, the last one I do want to touch briefly on is aspartame. Now, aspartame is an artificial street sweetener. It's been around for a while. Um, it has the potential to cause some inflammation. Okay. So initially when it first came out, it was um, a pro for diabetics. It was a good thing for diabetic patients because they were not supposed to have the sugar. And however, it is now been believed that it can actually cause some toxicity and some um, inflammatory response. So because what happens is it doesn't break down um, very well. Your body's not equipped to break down those artificial sweeteners. So artificial sweeteners, there's pros and cons to them. And we could do a whole series on that. And we just might one day. Um, but in general, pay attention to the artificial sweeteners. What's um, what you're putting in your system, you know, a little tiny bit. Is it better than real sugar? You're gonna have to be the judge of that. So I have given you a host of different types of foods that um, can initiate the inflammatory response. So what is the best for you? Food as fuel. So ideally, the best fuel is to have lots of veggies in your diet, okay? antioxidants, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, not too many because of this, the fructose, but those are going to actually counteract and they usually reduce the inflammatory response. Okay. So when we talked earlier about the Mediterranean nutrition plan or Mediterranean diet, this would be one I would say that would be a less Infl inflammatory diet. So when you're wanting to eat less inflammatory foods, following the Mediterranean diet is going to be more beneficial to you. So be sure and check out that episode so you can um, pay attention to that. Now, balanced diet. So eating what is appropriate for you, living a healthy lifestyle is going to help your body to function and keep you at your optimal health. Remember, you only have one body. You're only given this one. Take care of it now. Health is your greatest wealth. Now let's talk just briefly about a couple of anti-inflammatory agents. So if you do have inflammation and you've done what you can with the food or you're working on doing what you can with getting the food so you have more anti-inflammatory versus the pro-inflammatory foods. So you're getting those more more vegetables into your diet and you're following that Mediterranean like um, nutrition plan, but you might need a little, a little edge. So if you have inflammation, you're in pain. Okay. Whether that is internal or external, you see it, may, may not, you may see that redness, you may not, you may see the swelling, you may not, it could just be on the inside. It doesn't mean it's not there. When you have a headache, it's inflamed, it's in pain, okay? Now, anti-inflammatory medications, there are several prescription anti-inflammatory medications that we use, especially for arthritis and for chronic pain conditions. Things that you buy over the counter, ibuprofen or Advil or Aleve or naproxen, these are anti-inflammatory agents. So these are agents that take away the inflammation and help to reduce your pain. 
Well, pain is just a response of your body when you have that inflammation. Now, so those are things that may be used. Now you've got to be cautious and not use them for long-term because they do have some effects on your body because your body must break them down and over usage can cause some issues with your kidneys. So supplement wise, the best anti-inflammatory supplement out there is turmeric. Now turmeric also not without side effects, those, there is some side effects to the turmeric and there is things that if you don't have the right consistency or the right amount of turmeric, then your body is not going to be able to process that and have that great anti-inflammatory response. So one key thing that turmeric needs, you can't just drink the turmeric or sprinkle the turmeric on your food. You're not going to get the same benefit Turmeric needs black pepper in order to be activated properly, okay? So that's a key component. So when you are buying turmeric, make sure that it does have the black pepper component with it. And you can use that for your joints. You can use that for internal things. You can use it as a headache reliever. Whatever you're inflamed, you might want to do some inflammatory markers first and see to make sure that you don't need anything else. Okay. So why do you take certain things? We want to make sure you know why, and we'll be talking about that at a future episode. So tonight we have talked about inflammation and what it is, the ways that you can, foods that you can avoid, foods that you can use medications and supplements that are beneficial to help you reduce that inflammation. Remember, you only get one body. You only get one life. So use it wisely. Take care of yourself. Please book your consult with me at askdrmelissa.net. That way we can talk about your medications and your supplements. Have a blessed evening.